Okay, so this is a tutorial covering the process of using 3D Studio Max to do UV unwrapping, um, which is a technique that you're going to start, going to want to start using for more advanced models. Um, it's going to get rid of tiling that you see in typical texture map application. It's going to allow you to work specifically in Photoshop to do some things in a much more advanced way. So we're going to go ahead and start by linking this file with 3D Studio Max. So I'm going to go into 3D Studio Max, the big M, import, oh there's Photoshop, well done, big M, import, Revit link, and I'm going to link my UV project that I set up specifically for this. That said, when you're UV unwrapping a Revit model, um, you want to be very careful about what you're bringing in because as you, what you're going to see in a few minutes is the process can get pretty complicated when there's a lot of surfaces that get flattened out in your UV space. So one of the things that you want to start with is start simple and work your way through the complexity. And then also later on we'll create some tutorials that work you through creating um, some UV templates for more complicated geometry through a process of selecting specific surfaces. So uh, my link is already. I'm going to go ahead and say attach this file. And at the end of this tutorial we'll go through a few additional things as well uh, including not losing all the work that you do on your texture maps when you update a link. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this down here because we're going to want to revisit that later. Um, again, I typically like to delete the light and the camera that come in with Revit. And that's the very first thing that I usually do is come in and go to Create, Lights, Daylight System. Yes, I want to use the automatic exposure control and I'm going to set up a brand new sun. The, the nice thing about doing this in particular is this creates a system that is native to 3D Studio Max and it's also going to create a system that is something that I can um, work with inside of Max um, Max's existing tool sets. But to me things just seem to respond a little bit better when I do that. So the next thing I'm going to do here is um, just a quick revisit on this because I think it's probably been a bit since some people have seen it. If I have the Sun object selected right here, if I go to its Modify Properties, at this location I can say um, there is my date, time, and location set up. I can select a location. I can set the time of day. So for this particular project, let's just go ahead and set it to Guadalajara. And let's look at... Um, two o'clock in the afternoon um, on the summer solstice. And again, the one thing that you want to make sure that you're getting correct is setting true north. And to do that, uh, it's quite a bit easier than Revit because there's really nothing technical about it. I'm just going to select the compass and rotate that around to wherever true north is relative to my scene. So that's sort of setting up a brand new scene. Um, we're actually, you know, ready to render something like this now. But um, in working with a group of walls, one of the things that I might want to be able to do is more of a customized texture map, something that I know that I can't do in Revit. And one of the first things that, that comes around then is this idea of UV unwrapping, which basically takes our geometry and unfolds it in a new window so that we can work quite literally on a flat surface in Photoshop and apply whatever we've done directly to these walls. So to go through that process, first I'm going to select those walls. I'm going to go to my modifier list right here. At the very bottom is a tool called UVW Unwrap. Just pick the wrong one. Let's delete that guy. And let's try that again. Wall selected, I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. UVW or Unwrap UVW. Okay, so you notice things are going to kind of go green here. I'm going to slide this over to the side and I'm going to open up the UV editor. Now, UVs in particular, 
The best description I can give you, this is not very technical, but something to think about. Um, the XYZ space in 3D modeling is going to sort of be based around where your geometry is located. The UVW space is centered around where your texture maps are projected onto your geometry. So XYZ and UVW um, are both related, but UVW in particular relates to texture mapping. So this is my edit UVW workspace. And essentially it is all of the geometry of this wall system laid out flat. So the first thing that I need to do is actually explode them uh, into something that I can create a template for. So I'm gonna select them by the polygon method and notice I can select them here and it's selecting all of the geometry here. This is the same stuff, you know, it's just located in a different location, it's just placed in two different windows. So what I'm gonna do is flatten face by angle and that creates this template with all of the walls spread out, including the edges. And again, for this particular tutorial, I'm gonna be less concerned about those we're just going to get into the process of this, but you can start to see some ideas. Um, let's say that these two walls were related. Uh, in this, for instance, right now I have them arranged. They're probably not, but I could have a texture go seamlessly across one and then on to the next, which sounds like a simple enough thing, and it sounds like something that Revit should pull off on a regular basis, or 3D Studio Max standard texture mapping, but a lot of times it just doesn't happen. And also, we know that Photoshop is just great fun to use and a great great workspace to be in. Um, and it's a little easier for us to wrap our heads around doing texture mapping there than any place else. So this is a great technique to, to begin doing some more advanced work on your textures. So with this layout, what I'm going to do next is Tools, Render UVW Template. And the resolution of this stuff is fairly important. I'm going to stick with 1024 by 1024 for right now. But I know that if I'm doing a final movie and I'm going to render it out uh, from 3D Studio Max at 1080p HD resolution, if that wall, if I'm going to be up pretty close to the wall, I know that 1024 by 1024 might not be a high enough resolution. Uh, I'm going to stick with that for right now, um, but it's just sort of important to know how that's going to come together later on. So I'm going to go ahead and say render UV template and then I'm going to save this file out to my desktop as UV template 1 and I'm going to work with a PNG format in terms of bringing it into Photoshop. So once inside of Photoshop I can say open on my desktop UV template 1. And you notice it's a little bit difficult to see things right now. That is because inside of Photoshop, um, by using the PNG format, I actually have a clear background, which is something that I want to work with. So the first couple of things I'm going to do, create a couple of new layers. I'm going to call this one background. Hit OK. And I'm going to drag that underneath layer 0. New layer. I'm going to call this one numbers. And I'm going to put that on top of layer 0. On my background layer, I'm just going to go ahead and paint it white. Oh, let's, let's paint it black so the green lines pop really well. And then on my numbers, I'm going to go ahead and paint in complete slop artist fashion a number on each of the primary wall surfaces. And what that's going to do is it'll let me identify which unwrapped wall relates to which location inside of 3D Studio Max. So I'm just going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now when you get into some more complicated unwrappings, you're going to find that um, there are some advanced texture map techniques that people have created to help identify these. This one works pretty well for me though, uh, just because it's really sloppy and fast. So I'm just going to do a quick save as. I'm going to write this as a JPEG file to go ahead and flat it. Um, you can bring in a Photoshop file directly into 3D Studio Max, 
but as my students in class will testify, I've been having some problems with that lately. So we're just going to stick with this method right now as a JPEG. So I want to keep my Photoshop file intact with layers, but every time I want to import something in, I'm just going to go ahead and save it out as a JPEG file. So inside of 3D Studio Max's Material Editor, I'm going to drop a standard architectural material. I'm going to name this Wall UV. Underneath my color, I'm going to add a standard bitmap. And I'm going to select UV Template 1 JPEG. Then I'm going to drag that, the output node, directly to my object. If I did that a little bit too fast, again, I'm grabbing this texture map output node, dropping it right to my walls. Now, if you notice they don't show up, they won't show up until I select Show Standard in Map Viewport. And now I can see my exact numbers on that wall. And the first thing you notice, everything's upside down, which is a little bit annoying. Uh, we'll talk about fixing those things later in our UV unwrapping. But for right now, I know, well, I really don't want the green lines, I really don't want the numbers, so how do I go about overriding this with something new? So let's go into Photoshop, and I'm just going to do a very quick file, open, and I'm going to open up a texture map that perhaps I'd like to use on this. So this is a, um, wow, that's a failure is what that is. Let's go to this file, open, and let's just select a brick texture map. And I'm going to paste that directly into this. So I now have a new layer in my Photoshop file. And I'm going to go ahead and edit, transform the scale. Edit, transform, scale. to get this roughly the size of one of the walls. And also I want to create a texture map where the brick is roughly proportionate to what real brick should end up looking like. Which would not be this in this particular case. Um, that would be, you know, monster sized brick. I also know just from memory really quick, everything here is actually upside down. So the other thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to flip that over so that the shadows are casting the correct way. And I'm going to hide all my other layers. I'm going to add one new layer just to get at the idea of what we can do here. And I'm going to add a little bit of spray paint to that. Drop its opacity down. File, save as. A JPEG file to overwrite the brick wall UV. And then back inside of 3D Studio Max, all that I need to do is a quick double click on the bitmap and reload. Let's try that again, just like that. Open. There we go. And now you can actually see that texture map showing up on the surface. Now, the next thing that I can start to do is I also want to take that bitmap and go ahead and apply that as my bump map as well so that when we start rendering that file out you're getting both the quality of the bump map as well as the quality of the UV map on the surface. 
Now, the last thing that happens with this is if we want to make a change in the Revit file, let's say that we wanted to add in a floor with a handrail at a certain level. So I'm going to go to level 2, and I'm going to come in and say I would like a new floor system. that. And with the floor system, I'm going to also add in a new handrail. In particular, I'm going to add in a guardrail pipe just to the inside. Not being particularly precise with that, but you guys get the idea. It seems like I always put in my handrails backwards. So there we go, that should be flipped now and correct. So let's add this in and see what kind of change that's made. So I'm gonna do a big R save. I'm gonna go back into 3D Studio Max. I'm gonna close my rendering dialog box. I'm gonna pull up my manage links. If I look at files, I notice I've got a little red flag right here. That means the file that I have in Max is not the current file. So I'm gonna click reload. And that should pull up an options panel for me. I want to make sure that I am not updating the lights, the daylight system, or the camera. I want to make sure that I am keeping 3D Studio Max scene materials and the scene material assignments. I don't want to overwrite those. Essentially, I only want to overwrite the geometry. So this is very relative in terms of how you're using this particular link. For me, I like the advanced texture mapping skills that 3D Studio Max gives to you, so that's typically how I like to have things set up. So I'm going to say OK. And now you can see that I still have my texture maps. I still have my existing daylighting system but I've also brought in the new geometry that's part of the model inside of 3D Studio Max.